Hi, <clears throat> hi. This is Dana, and on this channel I speak about spiritual warfare. Um, I uh, have another channel uh, talking about um, astrology, and these two are my only channels. If you encounter any other channels, are not mine. <laughs> um, I do have though uh, copycats, double, double gangers, and uh, they. It seems they do. They create all sorts of. Um, uh, accounts and channels on different social media so <clears throat> those are not mine uh, now what um, I've been guided to talk about in this uh, video uh, by God is um, <clears throat> essentially God said I need to give examples <laughs> for some of the things that I've been talking about um, and um, he uh, God sometimes insists on giving clear examples, particularly because he sees that specific people don't uh, understand the message or they understand it the wrong way. Or sometimes these creeps who keep trying to distort the information I'm putting out there, they are trying to uh, uh, create confusion uh, by sending all sorts of um, um, Confusion spells and stuff. So I uh, noted a few topics on which God specifically guided me to uh, give concrete examples. Um, one of them is related to a concept which I keep talking about, namely, uh, you know, the broke breaking the bondages, uh, which essentially comes down to breaking generational curses, but. I say breaking bondages because not all of them are curses. Sometimes different type of darkness is being used, not curse, in order to create a generational um, pattern, uh, rep repetitive patterns, right? So there are different type of um, ways in which they work. And I <clears throat> gave examples uh, so far. But one thing that God has guided me to talk about is um, specifically to talk about uh, the person who's doing uh, breaking uh, the bondage. Um, it seems, I don't know who God is thinking of, uh, but it seems that there are people who don't understand something which is usually the, the very normal question. I asked myself this question initially when I started learning about this. Um, why me, right? Why me? Why, uh, when I encountered my first true um, spiritual fighting, uh, my first, um, you know, brutal attacks, we're not talking about general <clears throat> spiritual fighting, which we all do uh, in terms of cleaning energy and stuff like this, but real spiritual uh, battle, right? I couldn't understand specifically because it was out of my range. I was used with um, using the sword of light, uh, but this time all that was sent to me was witchcraft and um, was uh, basically totally something that I didn't expect. It didn't really match my uh, pattern of thinking. It was in a uh, huge contrast uh, with my principles um, and my values. Uh, of course, as all spiritual attacks are, that's the purpose, right? To uh, draw you into a conflict, a mental conflict, an emotional conflict. Uh, of course, they will attack uh, what is dear to you, your values and your principles in such a way. So it will create an internal conflict in you. Um, and uh, ideally, what they hope for is to traumatize you uh, that hard so you actually won't put up a fight. You will uh, just basically, most of the attacks actually, you have to know, have this purpose, namely uh, through uh, trauma um, to just push you into a sort of like, a, not they would hope submission, but normally it's a withdrawal. Uh, this is the first reaction you have when it's something that seems too outrageous for you uh, to face. And of course, that is a, a moment of um, decision-making. 
when you have to decide uh, if you actually uh, continue and confront them and uh, engage in battle or um, if you actually <clears throat> withdraw uh, and refuse uh, that kind of confrontation. Uh, it can go either way. It's pretty much based on uh, what you experienced in your life um, and um, this life and other lifetimes and uh, how you deal with um, uh, aggression, aversion, conflict and so on. Uh, but uh, it, you must know that if you withdraw and you don't engage in conflict, um, essentially uh, the dark forces being used are claiming you and soon afterwards you won't be able to see or hear uh, or receive direct communication with the divine realm once you are claimed. Basically, this is what it means. Being claimed by a dark force uh, can come for many reasons. One reason is if somebody made a sacrifice ritual on you, for example. Uh, if somebody signed a contract on you. Um, if somebody created, for example, like it's a very common practice these days, uh, uh, if somebody made a claim on you and that individual sold his soul to a dark force, right? Uh, or if um, an individual made a claim on you um, and they created fake marriages, which is very common, more common than you would imagine, uh, and you have no clue that actually uh, they created some uh, weddings uh, under different religions, under different type of um, deities, which you don't even know of their existence and stuff like this. So they, they claim you, right? But you must know uh, that that is a moment. God will show you something. Uh, and if you don't go further with that, if you don't engage in fighting, literally what happens is that your uh, energetic field will be infused with darkness from that dark force which claims you and literally it can go to some sort of energetic paralysis you literally don't see light anymore so you won't be able to understand and to distinguish what is going on i don't know how long this phase can last um but if you continue that path um, i would assume that the only outcome possible would be that you yourself um <clears throat> become influenced in thinking and in your behavior and in your uh, patterns uh, by that dark force. So you become sort of possessed, basically. Um, yeah. So, anyhow, when, when you encounter this initial moment, um, of course the first thought, because it's all usually so brutal, the, the purpose, one purpose of all of this is to block you. Because, first of all, being blocked uh, emotionally, being scared, being uh, uh, having very strong negative emotions, uh, basically that uh, closes you up energetically in astral. This is why they do the trauma bonding. Because if you're blocked energetically, then you don't have a presence in astral. And hence, it's much more complicated for you to actually see what is going on. Right, um, so ideally, you snap out of it, you bounce, uh, and you uh, start claiming justice, judgment, and punishment. So actually, God can come through and show you what is going on, and uh, ideally, you start fighting, because that's the only way to stay in light, basically. But of course, still remains the question: Why me? <laughs> and uh, believe me, that I have asked this question too, you know. And I, will, I ask this question uh, under very deep um, uh, frustration and, and uh, disbelief of what I was living uh, and experiencing. And um, it seems like there are people who actually uh, go through this uh, predicament right at this moment, and God wants me to talk about it. Um, the only question, the only answer that I can give you, the, the answer I received <laughs> um, throughout my experience, uh, was that, and God has been very patient with me, and I expressed my frustration on this matter many times. In many ways, uh, some of them not so uh, polite uh, and respectful and so on, because I felt deep 
a, a deep injustice uh, for me being forced to deal with some of the dirty laundry which has been building up by some other individuals, not by me. Uh, so I was like, I don't, I don't understand why I have to deal with this. Why me? Why I have to? I didn't create this. Why me? <laughs> Uh, so the answer usually is, um, the answer I got from God is that the answer that I received uh, precisely um, in these words, uh, quote, uh, is are that um, you are the youngest in our lineage and you are the most pure. So because of this, uh, you have authority in face of those um um, forces so those, for, those forces can claim you but when you speak up uh, and you rebuke those forces you have authority because you're pure and you haven't done this Any somebody else from the lineage who has done much of this or part of this right um, accepting this kind of uh, alluring uh, temptations and, and witchcraft which has been sent to them, they don't really have the same uh, authority which you have. And basically many times, many times, in fighting uh, a dark force, it's much more about authority than it's about uh, actual power. Authority becomes power, uh, you know, uh, because I said this in another video, the darkness has a, a logic of its own. And a, a dark force, for example, of lust can come and, and claim me because somebody made a sacrifice ritual on me or a curse or something. But uh, if I don't engage, I never engaged with that type of energy um, and I never accepted and I have passed tests multiple times of that being sent to me and I never budged and I never accepted it, that is called authority. So when I have authority, when I actually uh, uh, cast that out or uh, rebuke it or um, uh, I speak up and I say that uh, that is a lie, none of this is true, none of this is me, I did not call you, I did not accept you and I claim punishment on you that has authority. So then, um, literally, the dark force is fearing the individual who has this, namely, authority, which authority translates into power. Okay? And basically, God has said to me that, you know, you're the youngest in the lineage and um, the most pure. And hence, you are the most adequate um, representative to fight it. And it's something that is burdening the entire lineage. So it is true that it's unfair. But you can fight it precisely because you are not the one who created it. Precisely because you never accepted it. And you have passed the test multiple times uh, in order to actually graduate and receive authority in, in face of this force. So this is why... Like there were examples, you know, in my uh, spiritual journey when I was, um, God was guiding me to go and stay in a specific location. And uh, basically it was so much darkness. Uh, I cannot even explain. And I'm not going to enter into details to explain what kind of darkness it was and stuff like this. But I can only say this, you know, that I couldn't, uh, I, basically I, I felt my brain stopped <laughs> you know I couldn't even think enough to count uh, from 1 to 10 you know it was so much darkness I couldn't breathe I just basically couldn't breathe um, and I had basically I had to wash my face with cold water to just feel that I'm still alive you know it was really bad and um it was there, that location had a specific significance, and I was supposed to say something in that location. Of course, uh, soon afterwards, I prayed, and soon afterwards, God and Jesus came and showed me what to do and what to say. And God has shown to me next day, you were the only one who could withstand that type of darkness long enough for the 
uh, uh, for the um, a ceremony to take place. Uh, so we needed somebody from the lineage to actually be able to withstand that kind of time, that kind of darkness to that kind of intensity. And actually, God has said to me, and all the previous year in which you've done spiritual fighting uh, for a full year before living on the spiritual journey was basically a training for you. I have been training you and teaching you uh, how to work with energy, how to do this, how to do that, uh, in order to be able, I was preparing you for this particular moment, which didn't even happen in Romania. It was in a totally different country. Um, but the point is, he said, I needed you to prepare for a full year uh, so you go through all the tests in order for you, under their attacks, in order for you to gain that level of authority, which would keep you alive under the, this kind of darkness, which I knew you would have to face in order to carry on this uh, ceremony. And so you can um, actually rebuke this kind of um, curse on our lineage. Okay, so I don't know who's facing this. Uh, I know the frustration. I know uh, because it took a long time for me to understand. As I told you now, God has trained me for a full year before he actually even told me this. I, I mean, he told me after I was done with everything there. And uh, I didn't know ahead of time. So there was a lot of frustration mounting up for me uh, until I got to actually even get to that uh, situation. Um, but even afterwards, I must say, they, I still felt frustration because I was like, I don't understand. I still don't get it. Why me? Why I have to go through this? But again, the, the answer is usually that you are the one, but because it seems very unfair, but you what? this is basically the divine logic, which you must understand the one which, which I just explained so far, namely that you are the one that, um, will fight specific type of darkness, demons, and so on, in f f because in, in their face you have authority, and you have authority because you are pure. You're pure in the field in which whatever uh, type of attack you're facing, because everyone is facing different type of attacks. It's not for everybody the same, right? Um, so you must know that when people say you've been chosen, you know, You've been chosen. Also, people must understand that uh, being chosen uh, depends a lot um, on um, what you have done before. So if uh, you have received assignments spiritual, uh, in spiritual fighting and you refused them, uh, of course you're not going to be chosen. Because first of all, you refuse to fight. Second of all, you didn't... It, it's a gradual... Um, Training which you must go through, uh, a number of tests which you must pass. Uh, if you refuse to do uh, all of that, how would you be chosen? Why would you be chosen? You don't qualify. You don't qualify. That's one thing. Another thing, uh, many people talk about obedience uh, to God, and uh, many people understand it wrongly. Obedience is essential, but obedience doesn't mean that you're some stupid uh, idiot who keeps only... Uh, making uh, empty uh, worshipping and stuff like this. No, obedience means that you're going to be in such intense confrontations when if God says, move now, you got to move that very second. You cannot stay uh, and think about it. If God says, now stay, you stay. It's, it's, it's a matter of survival. So, uh, if you don't listen to him when he says, or if you just uh, sit on uh, yourself and you just debate with yourself, should I listen or shouldn't I? Well, you know, too bad. That, uh, that moment passed, the opportunity passed, you lost the battle, and that's it. So this is one of the reasons why some individuals are chosen. Because I'm very keen on clarifying all this. Because I, I think there's a lot of... <clears throat> Uh, I don't know how to call this, uh, a lot of um, arrogance on a part of some individuals uh, and specific issues are being viewed uh, wrongly 
uh, specifically who's coming and why why it's coming, uh, who's chosen, why it's chosen. Um, I said in my videos, uh, we all are created by God. God creates everybody the same. Um, but it's a matter of what you have done with what God had, had gave you. You know, it's a matter of your personal choices. Some of this God has shown me in many cases. Uh, some of this might not be your doing. It might be somebody else uh, who created a certain circumstance. God will make sure that you have the opportunity to make the right choice. But still, sometimes there are some situations in which a lot has a lot of bad um, cards have been dealt to a certain individual. Let's put it this way. I know this because I was dealt bad cards as well. Um, but it matters what you do with them. Okay? Um, so that's how you become karmic, by making the wrong choices. Um, and this is the same with the, uh, with, uh, the um, chosen ones. Uh, it's also a matter of choices. If you follow God and you're, as it's called, obedient, you have you stand the more chance to be chosen. Why? Simply because you gain experience. You evolve. You learn. I have learned tremendously from God in each and every single second of my life. I learned so much by being obedient and by asking questions. You know? And um, I, I specify all this. Um, God has shown to me that uh, these uh, imbeciles uh, who distort everything I say are using these uh, statements which I make uh, to say that, oh, we are all the same, so then uh, we should all be equal. <laughs> no, you shouldn't be equal. What I'm saying is that we have been created the same. And basically you bear the responsibility of becoming karmic. This is specifically why I don't put labels and I don't point the finger at anyone as being karmic. Simply because I believe it's your own responsibility for what you became. And labeling that uh, and turning our back to that, uh, I don't think that's a useful uh, attitude. Because actually I don't want to label and point the finger at you. I want to, I want to hold you accountable for the fucking choices you made. That you became this, which is called karmic by some people. So, uh, I, I, by saying that we, we have been created the same, it doesn't mean that I create excuses. It means that I call your bullshit out. We have been created the same. You don't have a reason to be resentful or to point the finger at us. Because you have created much of the, uh, of the um, darkness and the drama that we are cleaning up after you. Keep this in mind. You have created this. In many uh, lifetimes. And we are all struggling with it. And unfortunately you keep creating. And we keep cleaning up after you. Yeah. So I also wanted to get this out of my uh, 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 mind. To uh, explain it. Because God has shown it to me uh, some time ago. That now yeah, they are using the fact that you said that uh, you are all the same. And they are saying that they should receive the same uh, gifts and rewards as you. And I'm like, no, fuck no. Because I, I worked my ass off to get where I am. That's a distinction. And they've been doing only harm and stealing and killing and destroying. So no. Uh, this is the reason why I say we were created the same. Because we were. Because God is fair to everyone. This is why. Okay, so moving on. Uh, but it's a matter of your choices to close up that uh, uh, parenthesis. It's a matter of your choices. This is why, this is what makes the difference. And let me move to another topic which God has shown to me to, to give an example. Um, uh, it, it's a matter of choices and, of, and, this, and obedience to God. You must understand that by not being obedient, you simply uh, lose opportunities. And I imagine that people haven't been facing the same type of attacks like me because I have been seeing from the very uh, beginning that it's a matter of survival. There was so much darkness and uh, so much darkness claiming me that although I'm not very obedient by nature, uh, it didn't even cross my mind to actually argue with God in that very moment. I was like, just tell me what to do. 
just tell me what to do to get out of the here. Uh, and of course, I debated with God later on after I felt safe. Um, but anyhow, another example that actually God wanted me to give, it's about, because I have been talking about this uh, assignment of the couples. And um, it's, it's the same thing. It's a matter of choices and obedience. Um, <clears throat> I have had situations in my um, spiritual fighting and in my existence, uh, particularly since I started the spiritual fighting, um, when God specifically requires me, uh, many times God doesn't say anything um, prior to um, uh, coming together in a couple. Uh, but I have situations in which God has guided me, actually, um, towards a specific person. And I'll give you one example. Last year, uh, out of the blue, um, God has guided me uh, to accept uh, because I... I um, had generational wealth, and I was break. I, I already broke the bondage. Um, God has guided me uh, to accept a union uh, with an individual whom I never met. I never spoke to him. Right? I never spoke to him. I never met him. <clears throat> I think I saw him from a distance, but I was not interested in him. You know? And... Basically, uh, at that point in time, I asked God, uh, and this is an assignment. So if God says that you, you should be with this one, uh, basically, uh, it means that this is an assignment. And I was like, this is not normal uh, in nowadays, right? Uh, this is sort of like arranged uh, union, but um, it's not normal for our age at this point in time. Uh, and I asked God, I said, what, why? What are the advantages if, we are, if I accept this union? Um, and God has shown to me, basically, there were a number of advantages. One of them, which I remember, was um, that we could bring uh, from the lineage specific ascended masters uh, into 3D existence uh, embodiment. Um, and there was a specific reason why... There was a specific type of alliance which was created, work was being created this way, and we could bring um, our um, a specific number of ascended masters into embodiment into 3D, which would have meant uh, obviously transmutation of, of a lot of darkness and so on. So it was huge impact. That's my point. So I immediately said, okay, yes, then. If if this is the purpose, of course, I will. I, I was thinking actually also to myself. Maybe I won't have to carry on so much fighting. Maybe some men from our lineage will come, and will do the fighting. You know, and I said, okay, fine. And um, that individual um, basically uh, backed off shortly after, um, and uh, rejected um, the. Um, uh, the offer, basically, which was not, I did not consider it my offer. I considered it God's offer because he knew as much as I knew that it was God's decision and I just obeyed God's decision to be together. And keep in mind that at that point in time, I broke the bondage, I uh, broke the uh, generational curse, and I had... Uh, generational wealth. Uh, so like in, in Tarot, I had the Ten of Pentacles. Okay? So for me, I was fine on my own. I didn't have anything personally to gain uh, in terms of material abundance from that individual. But I accepted because I knew that we were in a spiritual fighting and I could understand what tremendous impact would have um what God has said to me, right, about uh, what would be the outcome of that union. But that individual basically said, I'm not so sure, <laughs> or something like this, you know. And I was like, uh, and then uh, basically uh, it turned out that um, he brought a lot of darkness with him. Uh, and um, very soon afterwards, um, God said, now, from this moment, and God kept asking him, you know, God kept insisting uh, to convince him. 
and then it, of course I got annoyed, uh, probably a little bit from ego, but uh, also it's like, you know what, I don't need this individual, why are you begging him so much, why are you keep asking him so much, I think it's stupid and embarrassing what you're doing, I don't understand why you insist so much, and soon afterwards God has shown to me that individual um, basically betrayed uh, he made contracts uh, and promises over my generational wealth uh, for the uh, ca the case in which he would accept um, the proposal, the union, uh, you know. And God has said that moment the window of opportunity is closed. Uh, I and he showed to me that he entered into a group which was doing uh, certain ritualic uh, practices. Um, and basically, the type of practices they were doing, God has shown to me this uh, right now. He just um, summoned a specific dark force and he sold his soul. And this is why I begged him for so long, because he has done this in each and every lifetime. He sold his soul in each and every single lifetime. And I was begging him. I gave him the chance to be in a union with you and to benefit of the generational wealth with which you built up. Um, so he won't do this again. I was just hoping that in this lifetime, he won't do this again. So, because he is also from uh, our lineage. Uh, and that I just simply wanted, uh, because in the previous lifetimes, it seems like he did this uh, because I refused the union with him and he sold his soul to uh, Dark Force um, in order to receive me, to, to get me. He didn't get me, but he did sell the soul. Okay, so God this time, he said, okay, before he gets to do this, I offered to him what he actually wanted, a union with you. So if I offer you a union with her and this time she obeys what I ask, and she accepts the union. Do you still do the same thing? And yes, indeed, he did the same thing. Because that is his fight to carry on. That is a bondage he has to break. Nobody can break it. This is a pure example how nobody can, even God, nobody can help you if you don't fight for yourself. You see? So God literally shows me afterwards, this is why I insisted. Because he has done this in order to be with you in other lifetimes. So now what I wanted was to offer to him the chance to be with you. So I will prevent him from selling his soul again. So hopefully we get him to come home this time. But as I explained, he actually refused that uh, and um, he uh, sold his soul again. You know and, um, and this is uh, a, an example of assignment mis not understood. After that, so God said to me, from this moment po forward, he's being claimed by darkness. You don't accept him. You walk your path because he's going to destroy you. Okay. So after that, I just, of course, I refused him. I was like, I actually said to God, I said, you told me to accept him. You told him me to refuse him. That is your thing with him. Do you see how I'm like just, uh, you know, I don't understand my place in this. Because uh, I in 3D, I never met this individual this lifetime. And you have all these businesses with him from previous lifetimes. I try to help, but at the end of the day, it's nothing. I mean, it's not my battle. It's your issue. And... The point uh, that I want to make and the example that I want to give is for people to understand the assignment when it's done, when it's offered by God. Because you have a window of opportunity. If you don't uh, do the assignment, then later it's, you cannot. You simply can't. Because, for example, this union had the purpose only to save us all. So that individual won't sell the soul to that specific force. But he did it anyway. So then God said, okay, from this point forward, you put yourself first. Because he, from this point forward, he cannot come to you. Why? Because uh, he brought onto himself so much darkness, which will destroy you. 
You have no guilt in this. You don't have to put up with this. He should be carrying all that. You already reached a certain level of um, ascension uh, and elevation. You have other tasks to, to take care of. You're not going to uh, battle his uh, demons only because he insists on bringing those demons into his life. Nobody forced him to do this. This time around, we gave him the opportunity to be with you before doing that. But of course, with each li lifetime and every time you keep doing that and you sell your soul, you give more power to the darkness. And of course, at this point in time, I don't even know why he did this because uh, as God said, we offered him the opportunity not to have the argument to do that this time around. And still he did it. So, um, so the assignment is given to you by God, but you must be obedient and you, you must be obedient when he asks you. Because most in spiritual fighting, mostly like 99%, most everything, um, has a very short window of opportunity. You cannot be debating with yourself for too long if you do or not do something. You got to do it then. If you don't, then everything changes in a few minutes. Okay? Um, so energy is volatile and it changes. Um, okay, so I gave you one example of assignment. And um, an assignment... Basically, I explained already this, and I shouldn't be entering in too much details. We are not here to live in 3D. We are here to carry on a fight. Of course, you can enjoy yourself if you can, but the focus is to carry on your spiritual fighting and spiritual uh, uh, elevation, including the union, including a couple union that has, has is an assignment, has a spiritual meaning and purpose, which you must understand. Uh, so this is why I gave you this example. Uh, so you will understand, for example, in this with this union, we could have uh, brought uh, onto... Now, let me explain this. It doesn't mean that the only way to bring those ascended masters into embodiment was through that union. God already changed that strategy many times since then, and he created different other opportunities. Okay. God will bring a different individual to fulfill that uh, role, which doesn't bring darkness with him uh, to destroy everyone around. Okay, um, But what I mean is that each union has a spiritual purpose and you must understand the assignment. And uh, if this is your assignment to do uh, at that particular time, now you have to do it, you have to accept it and you have to do it when you're asked to do it. Because now, you see, since that moment until now, a year has passed. And in this year, many things could have been saved uh, if that could have w was done uh, at that point in time. Even in my own life, I would have been relocating last year before Christmas, like God has promised to me. You know? uh, but instead, I'm still here. I missed the opportunity of relocation uh, before the, uh, winter because of this because uh, of this individual opening up uh, different portals and uh, new darkness, bringing new darkness into uh, the lineage and so on, which I had to fight since then. Okay, so I gave you one example uh, of uh, how a union can be an assignment and what can be. Each every and every union is an assignment. You must know this. It's just that usually uh, with a 3D focus, you miss uh, uh, exactly the purpose of that union, the true purpose of that union. Uh, a union can be a lesson, something that you must learn, and usually those are karmic uh, unions. And ideally, you shouldn't get into true union with an individual. You should learn the lesson as fast as possible, get out and live. Or you have a purpose to achieve something together for the ascension and for the divine realm. And I gave you an example how you could uh, do it. Also, I gave you an example how you can screw it up. Okay, let's move on. Uh, I have two more topics which God has guided me to talk about. It's already 40 minutes, so I'm, I'm going to try to be um, talking faster. Um, now, another example is that uh, God has guided me to talk about uh, something I said in, in the previous video, namely that you have to... Um, prosecute. So you have to uh, take measures in 3D 
uh, in or, the judgment, the divine when the divine judgment is done, right? So you carry uh, your fight in spiritual realm, but also in 3D. So in spiritual realm, you claim justice, judgment, and punishment. And there is a court which um, comes together in the divine realm and judges every situation, every individual, and so on, right? Now, once you want that, you should go and take uh, measure um, steps in uh, 3D. I, for example, I will give you an example briefly. I will not enter into this uh, too deeply, and I will make another video about this topic, about financial issues. Um, I, for example, just uh, reported at the police and requested um, to be prosecuted. Uh, individuals who have um, uh, opened a um, bank account in my name using my identity. I, w I never stepped foot into that bank before. And for years, they have created this account, uh, which they used in my name, with my picture, with my identity. They got somehow all my personal data, and they used it um, in order to uh, get money. They made different uh, loans, as I understand, in my name. Um, and they used basically that account. I will show you an example how that account was used against me uh, because God has shown to me that not many people know uh, I was on spiritual journey and there were people who were sending me um, money to help me um, and I couldn't get the money basically what happens is that if they have an account of yours if they have access to your account what they do they make uh, promises you cannot imagine these people are so crazy so they make promises in your name a man claims you and um, in their crazy mind, that individual who claimed you has rights to speak of, uh, over your finances, over your rights, over your... This is why I keep saying, claim matriarchat if you want to get out of this madness. Um, and that individual who claimed you uh, is um, entitled in their own crazy lunatic mind uh, to make promises over your fi finances. One of these crazy bastards has claimed me, actually this individual who God told me to uh, accept a union with him, you know, uh, he um, made uh, financial promises in my name. And if they make a financial promise in your name, what happens is that all the uh, resources which the divine realm are di directing to you, including money, um, are redirected to the individual who keeps uh, this promise uh, from your money. So money are sent to you in order to achieve a project or to buy a house or to whatever you want to do because it's your divine right to receive those money. Um, or you want to develop a project like I wanted to develop when I moved here in Chernika. And I had resources already allocated. And because they take this, um, they make this claim on you and they take um, access to your account, your finances and your rights, they promise those to somebody else, right? And uh, they redirect the funds uh, to that individual. This is the spiritual, um, basically, uh, stealing, stealing money, stealing uh, resources from you. Um, and they need to have an account of yours uh, to be open. They can make uh, credits in your name because you have divine rights to receive those credits. They don't, okay? They are not uh, normally allowed to receive that, but they use your name for this reason. Um, so uh, a bank account, uh, then what they did on this bank account, they created, I don't know how to say this in English, it's uh, like they created a, a fake uh, blockage, official formal blockage, uh, in which uh, all the uh, money which would come on that account should go to a specific person. Now, the outcome of that was that I could not receive funds which were directed at me in 3D world. It, it's a much more complicated um, a story related to uh, financial issues on which I will make a separate video for this. Uh, this one has already 44 minutes. So I will stop here basically because it's way too much um, and it's gonna take forever to upload. Um, yeah, God keep insisting, showing me to say one, a few more things about 
body jumping and body snitching. Uh, body snitching, because I have been uh, referencing to this a lot, uh, I have seen body, I, I have seen and experienced body snitching. Uh, the first time God showed me body snitching in 2017, when uh, a murder took place in uh, Romania, an individual, a woman, pushed another woman in front of a metro, in a metro station, and she died, she was killed by the metro, and so on. And the entire country was outraged. And God has shown to me at that particular time how it happened. So I could actually see it, you know, basically how somebody body, sne body snitched, basically took her body, took over her body, you know, and uh, created that uh, incident only to have her accused locked up in a prison and in um, uh, mental uh, illness uh, hospitals, prison, um, in order to use her energy, you know. So what I have seen, and I will try to describe, I don't know why he wants me to explain this. I, I imagine this is useful to someone. Um, so what I have seen, so it, I have seen also who did it, you know. Um, so the individual who did it basically did astral projection. So uh, they said, they sent sort of like, I, it looked like a body of light to me. Okay, like the light body looks, uh, our light body looks. Uh, in any case, this um, entered into um, this woman's body, literally. It's like a phantom. It looks like a phantom, but it's not a phantom. It's an energy. It's the energy, but it's the shape of the light body. And it enters the human body. And that's a body snitching, because that is a spirit which comes and enters the body and takes possession of the body. And I asked God, can you show me where she is, this woman who's uh, been body snitched? And basically God has shown to me uh, that she was looking like she was dead. And that uh, it's a sign that she's uh, in conscience. So she uh, basically... Um, it's uh, a body snitching completely on mental, emotional level. So uh, she is not aware of what is happening. She's not, li literally, she's not aware. So, uh, for example, in spiritual fighting, God always shows me when somebody has been body snitched. So he shows me the same image, like that individual is like a dead person in conscience, and somebody, <clears throat> somebody else is using that body that energy, okay, <clears throat> and um, created that incident, pushed that uh, woman in front of the metro, and so on, you know, and when that uh, woman was interrogated, actually she said, uh, I see the image on TV, but it wasn't me, I did not do this, she kept saying this continuously, you know, but during the interrogation, because I, I, I read the transcript, uh, you know, uh, she would say now, she would say, it, it was not me. I didn't do that crime. I didn't. And then two minutes later, you know, uh, because I could see that, again, the same uh, force, the same woman, it was actually a woman who, who did this, um, was body snitching again during the, she was in the tribunal in a court of law. You know, and that woman did a body snitching right in front of the judge and everyone. And um, she started saying, uh, I killed her, I killed her, I killed her because uh, she was playing uh, loud music and it was annoying me. You know, and then that uh, um, spirit got out of the body again. And uh, this woman would come to life and she would say again, uh, I didn't kill her. It's not me. I didn't kill her. You know, I have seen this. I have watched this. This was part of my training. <laughs> I was uh, learning to work with energy then. And God was showing to me cases uh, like this. So I will understand when this happens. So then a few months later on, they tried to do body snitching at me. You see, this is why God was preparing me. And you literally um, can see this uh, light body, which, uh, which is animated by a spirit, Right? Because they work with darkness in doing so. They really don't do um, energy work like us. They actually, all energy work they do, they do with darkness. And uh, they send um, this light body with 
um, a spirit, uh, and you can actually feel when that um, uh, energy and that body light enters your body. It's, it's like a human, it looks like a human, and you can actually see when it enters your body. Um, and I guess somebody is confronting this. Well, this is why God is talking to me, because God has uh, showed, said to me before even I started the video to explain how you deal with it. How you deal with it. By awareness, you deal with it. By, first of all, by being aware that this is happening. So you need to raise the level of your energy awareness. It, it's mandatory. Uh, now, once you see that, that somebody enters, uh, that one of these uh, body lights or body snitching is happening to you, so it enters basically, you can actually feel uh, in your body, you can feel when... Um, they overlap. It's it's an energy, uh, a light body, which totally overlaps with yours. And then you feel pain when it enters your body. And usually it locates at specific organs. It's not a, just a general because they sent a spirit with it that uh, creates this um, body snitching. And um, it's uh, it can be done on soul level, on heart level. Um, it can be done on womb level um, or on intestine. On uh, So this is sort of like a binding, if you want. Uh, but it's different because it enters your body. Binding is painful because it's sort of like a telepathy. Uh, and they live through uh, your organs. But uh, body snitching is different because you actually feel that that is inside of you. That force, it's inside of you. Okay? And um, so you have to have a high uh, energy awareness and you have to um, uh, identify what it wants. What's the legitimacy they use to uh, keep that and um, push it out. And it helps if you do um, fasting. If you do fasting and praying, um, it because... Body snitching is the first step of possession. Okay? Possession is a very strong addiction. A strong addiction, why? Because you have that thing in you. It's not you. It's not your body. It's the energy, uh, the light body of somebody else, and it's a spirit which actually feeds from that addiction. It's not you. This is why you have exorcism. And after exorcism, you feel sick, but also uh, you feel a relief. It's sort of like you, you have a, a cleanup uh, in your energy. So the addiction is created by body snitching. This must be clear. Any addiction, all addictions are created by body snitching, by, by sending a certain spirit which feeds from that type of energy which you seem to be addicted to, but it's not you. It's that thing which is in, within you. So you have to push it out. So because uh, you want to stop the evolution towards possession, uh, you literally have to do um, fasting as much as you can. Go without eating. Uh, because um, then you push that energy out. You know? Your your energy starts consuming that energy. You push it out. This is why. This is how it works. Basically, this is why you do the uh, fasting. Uh, so you can actually expel that energy, that darkness energy from your body. Uh, and of course, there you can do, um, if you can, uh, physical movement. So you can do, you know, the uh, when you do the prayers, you can do the bows. Uh, or you can do something else, some other type of sport. Whatever you can, you don't feel good when you have this thing. Uh, you feel physically uh, blocked, energetically blocked. You don't feel your energy very well. Um, so it, it's very, very unpleasant, very unpleasant and very damaging to your energy. Um, okay, so, yeah, how you deal with it. Well, this is how you deal with it. Uh, I guess um, basically fasting and praying and doing sport and uh, being very much aware of what is going on and what type of spirit is that so you can actually don't feed it. So, for example, if it's a sexual addiction, 
uh, that the spirit wants to create in your body, you abstain from that. If it's um, food addiction, you abstain from that. If it's a, I don't know what else, if it's a um, fight addiction, for example, there are spirits which feed from aggression, from conflict, from scandals, from, uh, this is, these are the people who keep creating uh, all sorts of uh, scandals and fights from nothing for no reason whatsoever. Because they have demons in them which feed on that. Lucky second time. Um, so, um, and many other uh, things. People uh, who see, you, you see gossiping and doing harm, um, saying slander, uh, slandering names of people and so on. This is also why. Because they have demons in them, uh, which they no nourish uh, and they feed properly <laughs> by uh, slandering innocent people's names. There's a lot of mean, uh, ugly uh, feeling in a human who does uh, slander and, and, uh, um, um, and um, insulting other people creating slander and uh, denigration. This is what I couldn't find, denigration. Um, and uh, they do so because they have different specific uh, demons and because they um, feed those demons by doing so. You see? Yeah. So, um, well, it's already one hour since I keep uh, recording. I'm going to stop now because I think it's going to take forever to upload. I already spoke about uh, body snitching as well. Uh, I hope whoever goes through it uh, will find the strength to come out of it. Uh, you just abstain for everything, from everything, basically. You just abstain from everything. And uh, meanwhile, pray uh, and keep um, a candle uh, light uh, at all times. Uh, write an astral letter to God uh, because uh, the written word adds to the power of the spoken word. Um, and by asking help, um, so you can be vindicated and uh, whatever was sent to you to be nullified and uh, rebuked. Um, so I'm going to stop now. Uh, and we are now, I think, already in the Lion's Gate. Okay? Uh, because uh, it's midnight for me here. So we are already in the Lion's Gate officially, formally. Um, I wish everyone uh, the best. Uh, what is just? I really, really wish everyone what is just. Um, as I said about uh, prosecution, you should go and prosecute um, everything, uh, all the spiritual fighting that you have done. I intend to do so. Um, each and every single case that I have been involved in spiritual fighting, uh, I will take uh, to a court of law in 3D um, as soon as I have um, the possibility, the support, and and uh, the proof necessary in order to be prosecuted. Um, I definitely intend to do this in my next step uh, because uh, I've been fighting a lot in spiritual terms and uh, I didn't do this for nothing. I want this to, uh, I want to bring this to fruition in 3D and um, I believe that each and every single one of you should do the same. Uh, I believe that the Lion's Gate and um, the Blue Lodge uh, Sirius uh, Ascended Masters uh, will give guidance to everyone in this regard. I believe this is um, the task uh, that we have to focus on uh, before uh, the next uh, karmic board meeting in December so we can successfully close up uh, other cycles uh, in bondage breaking. Uh, 